the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living, through chemistry, presents Warren William in The Major and the Mules. <laughs> Before we tell you about this evening's play, here is a bit of news of how chemistry is helping to stretch our wartime food supply. Three billion loaves of bread will be protected against losses resulting from mold this year by adding a special DuPont mold inhibitor, Mycoban propionate salts, to the dough before baking. Due to the wartime necessity of conserving food, more of this mold retardant will be used than ever before. This evening, with Warren William as our star, Cavalcade brings you The Major and the Mules, a true story told tonight for the first time of the turning point in the battle for the Owen Stanley Mountains in New Guinea. Carl F. Polifka was the Major's name, and he came from the USA. The Mules, well, the Army still doesn't know for sure where the Mules came from, but they were a decisive factor in one of our important victories in the South Pacific. DuPont presents The Major and the Mules, an original comedy by Robert Tallman, starring Warren William as Major Carl Polifka on The Cavalcade of America. Fort Moresby, the hot, steaming little seacoast town on the southern shores of New Guinea that is the Allied base of operations against the Japs. At Army headquarters, a meeting is in session of the combined Australian and American general staff. So much for the basic strategy of tomorrow morning's attack, gentlemen. At this very moment, our bomber command is attacking the Jap supply lines and ammunition dumps. By tonight, our little friends over there won't have enough ammunition left to stop a Boy Scout troop. Got most of their depots spotted, eh? Every last one of them. We've double-checked the positions on low-altitude photographs. General, there's no chance of their bringing up more stuff, I suppose. Not over those mountain trails, Colonel. Not unless they have a continuous transport system of some kind. And they haven't. Not since the native bearers deserted them. Oh, yes, I've flown over their supply lines myself. There's not a sign of line. Good. Now, at dawn, the artillery will open up on their forward position. At zero plus 45, our first wave will go over. I... Oh, now, what was that? Say, that's artillery. Uh... Answer that, orderly. Yes, sir. Now, as I was saying, gentlemen... Staff headquarters. I think... Uh, they're asking for you, General. Oh? Excuse me, gentlemen. Hello? Yes? They're what? Thank you. Well, gentlemen, the Jap artillery has opened up on us. Seems like they're beating us to the punch. Yes. Got us pretty well spotted, too. Well, I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to step down into the shelf. Well, I suppose you're right. This way, please, gentlemen. Right down these stairs. Thank you. Thank you. Here's the door. Listen to that, will you? Yes, pretty heavy. No lack of ammunition there if they can afford to throw stuff around like that. I'm afraid you're right. Uh, How will this affect our plans for the attack tomorrow, General? Affect them? It'll cancel them. If they still got that much ammunition, we'd better hold off for a while. Agree, gentlemen? I dare say you're right, but where can they be getting it from? Well, they're not supermen. There must be some explanation. If we don't find it pretty soon, it's going to be just too bad. We're holding them on the southern slopes, but that's about all. We've got our backs to the sea, and if they take Port Moresby, you can kiss all of Northern Australia goodbye within a month. In other words, unless we lick this mystery of the Jap supply system, gentlemen, we're licked. Well, frankly, I'm stumped. Trucks are out of the question over those jungle trails. They haven't had a plane in the sky for weeks. Yes. Now, now we know horses are no good for this terrain, and there aren't enough Jap troops in the whole South Pacific to carry the stuff on their backs. Well, gentlemen, we've got to find the answer and find it quick. You sure aerial reconnaissance hasn't missed something? Well, I was sure this morning, but they must have. Uh, Colonel. Yes, sir. Have reconnaissance go over the terrain again. Have them go over every inch of it until they find... (laughs) Gentlemen, uh, something just occurred to me about this. uh... What is it, General? (laughs) I'm almost ashamed to mention it. But if I didn't know there just ain't no such animal out here, I'd say they must have a flock of good old Missouri mules. Mules? (laughs) I say, really? Where would they get them, General? (laughs) No, gentlemen, no. It's just a crazy no-account hunch. We've got to find hard, solid facts. 
What are you saying, Doc? I check. Harry? Buy me. Sorry, boy. One buck. Oh, oh now, Pop, Pop wait a minute. has got him again. Why don't we just give him the money? Didn't I help it if I get the card? Well, frankly, Major Polifka, I don't mind you getting most of the cards. I just mind you getting all of them. Oh, why don't you call me? Maybe I'm kidding. Yeah, I tried that. Yeah. Hey, Sergeant. Hey, Tick. Yes, sir. Close that door, will you? Yes, sir. How do you expect a bunch of poor pilots to get any relaxation with all that noise going on? I'm sorry, sir. Only kidding, Tex. I wouldn't rag a guy from the old home state. Well, what are you guys saying? It's all yours. Take it. Not me. Thanks, fellas. Your deal, friend. Yeah. What do you say we make it the last hand? What? And you 40 bucks ahead? Why, Pop, how mercenary. Oh, yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. It's not that. I, I'm tired. No kid. You're tired? Of what? Raking in the dough? No. Nope. Okay, I'll give you back the dough. Yeah. I just want to sleep, that's all. Yeah, for two bits, I take him up on it. I could retire on what he's taken away from me in the last six weeks. <laughs> What's the matter, Pop? Not sleeping? Not the last three, four nights. Nerves? I suppose so. Yeah. I keep hearing things. What sort of things? Well, mm. probably hears the call of far-off Cuba Libre. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, Pop. Well, it's a funny thing. I I've heard it the last four nights. What? Mew. Oh. You? Oh. Oh, no, I will take my joke. We'll take a guy from Texas for that one. Huh? No, no, I'm not kidding. I do. I, I hear them all the time. Go ahead, Doc. Tell him what Freud says it means when you dream about mules. Go I ahead. don't dream about them. I hear them. Sure, you hear mules and I hear Carol Landis. That'll give you a rough idea of the difference between a guy from Texas and a guy from Brooklyn. All right, all right, wise guys. If you don't want to take a fellow officer's word. Oh, fellow officer. Maybe I better yeah, give him, you a couple of sleeping pills, Pop. No, thanks. But it's funny. I know mules. I was brought up with mules. Uh -huh. I believe that. No, <laughs> listen. Beg <laughs> pardon. Beg pardon, sir. Yes, yeah, sir? I couldn't help but overhear the conversation, sir. So? I hear him too, sir. Why? Yeah. Hey, just because oh, you guys well, are in the same state. Come state on, now, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait oh. a minute. You say uh, you hear mules too, son? Yes, sir. Uh, what did I tell you? There are mules. Uh-huh. The sergeant's a smart cookie, even if he is a radio operator, eh, Tex? Oh, cut it out, Pop. Yeah, how much of a cut has he given you, yeah. sergeant? Oh, it's true, sir. I've heard him for the last three or four nights. Sure you have. You can't fool an old Texas farm boy about mules. I hear, when I hear mules, I hear mules. And when I hear one, I can tell whether he's from Texas or Missouri. How much he weighs and how old he is. Sure, my grandmother had the same trouble. <laughs> You want to bet there's no mules? But, Pop, how could there be? We don't have any. The Japs couldn't have any because there are no mules in the Far East. Let them bet. Let well, them even bet. if the Japs right. did have any, you couldn't hear them this far away. Listen, those guys are pushed so near our lines by this time, I can hear them breathe at night. And anyway, a mule's voice can carry for miles. And so can a Polifka's. Ah, uh, but don't you half wit see? This may be the answer to how the Japs are getting their supplies through the mountains. Look, the Japs don't have mules. They never have had and they never will have. We may have sold them a little scrap iron, but we didn't sell them any mules. Ah, uh, it doesn't sound plausible, Pop, even from a scientific point of view. I don't think mules could even live in this climate. Why not? I do, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> He's got some there, Doc. The comparison is terrific. <laughs> all right, all right. If you birds are so cocky, how about backing yourselves up with a little hard money? What? I'll take you on. Yeah. yeah, but you have all my dough. I'm practically clean. I'm back on relief. No, stop, stop. You're breaking my heart. How much do you penny pinch a figure you drop? Well, if you're asking me, 80 bucks. You, Doc? 94 and some change. Call it 95. Fred? 60. My poor old mother with payments to meet on the washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> 83, 85, and 60. Okay. If I lose, I'll pay over 238 bucks and you can split it up. And if I win... It looks as though you work for me and Uncle Sam for the dual race. Oh, boy, Mama's washing machine is safe. <laughs> is it a deal? <laughs> it's it's safe. Safe. Uh, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. How are we going to prove anything? Well, look. Look, I'm flying reconnaissance in the morning, and, brother, if there are mules, I'll find them. You wouldn't cheat on an old buddy, would you, Fred? But you worry, chum. If you're right, which you ain't, it sure'd be worth it to find mules. <laughs> I was a sucker, Bed Pop. Why don't you give up? 
You vultures are at least going to wait until Freddy gets back, aren't you? Yeah. Three more beers, please. Yes, sir. Now, I suppose I must be wrong, but it's uh, funny. I heard them just as plain. Yeah. Did you hear them last night, Pop? No. Uh, no, I didn't. There, I told you it was a case for Freud. Once you talked and got it off your conscience, yeah. no more mules. Right. Hey, there's oh, Freddy. Oh, here comes Freddy, the boy. Here. Here. here he is. Right over here. Well, uh, mind if I join you, gentlemen? Oh, don't be so cozy. What about the mule? Well, Pop, I covered the whole territory. What do you think I saw? Mule. No, nothing. Ah! <laughs> hey, fellas, come here. <laughs> but Politka rides again. This time to the cleaner. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, Pop, I couldn't have missed them if they'd been there. No, no kidding. Nothing that looked like corrals or sheds or... No, not a thing. Come on, Pop, come on, pay off. Yeah, it looks like he's right, Pop. What do you fellas say? Well, I say yeah, yes. Right, give it out. Sure, okay, give it out. okay, here it is. Well. Look well, at that. well, thank you very much. <laughs> want a want a kind of? Oh no, that's all right, kid. We'll take your word on anything but mule. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you better give me a couple of those sleeping pills with that, dog. Yes, yeah. you better. Drop around to see me tonight before you turn in. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, no, well, listen. Anyway. Do what? Hey, Bob, choke that music box, will you? What's he doing? Oh, now, no, now no, listen. What? Quiet. What? Listen. You hear that? Oh, I'll be. What'd I tell you? That's a mule. Hey, what do you wait mean, a, a mule? Now, I tell you, it is. Well, it did sound like one. Oh, it could have been a hyena or something. Oh, sure, it could have been anything. It sure. could have been a parrot. Sure. It could have been the old man snoring. It... Oh. As you are, gentlemen, as you are. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, what's the discussion? Oh, we were uh, just talking about noises, sir, like uh, snoring. <clears throat> and... No, it's more than that, sir. I think it's important, and, and, and I think the general ought to know about it. Know about what? The noises, sir. I mean, the mules. I'm, I mean... Mules? Uh, noises? What the devil are you talking about? But, but we heard them, sir. We all heard them just now. Heard what? Mules? Yes, sir. Major Politka, I hope this isn't a joke. It's not, sir. I've heard them, and a sergeant's heard them, and, and just now we all heard them. Is uh, this true, gentlemen? Well, well I heard anything, uh, General. It certainly happen. sounded like a mule, sir, but... Uh... But what? General, I'm positive it's mules. Because uh, besides mules or some pack animals, the only way the Jap could possibly be getting his stuff over the Owen Stanley... But how would they get any mules? Why hasn't Reconnaissance seen them? A mule's a big animal. It needs shelter, corral. I don't know the answers to all that, sir. Camouflage would account for some of it. The Jap's awful cute at that kind of stuff, but uh, but I'll bet you this whole roll of bills... Uh, what roll? <clears throat> Well, I mean, uh, if you'll just let me fly over and take a look for myself, sir. Well, what makes you think you are particularly suited for mule-finding missions, Major? Well, sir, I just know mules, that's all. Hmm. Well, we've tried everything else. All right, go to it. Yes, sir. But if this is some kind of nonsense, Philippe. Yes, sir, that is, uh, no, sir. Report your findings to me tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night. Good night, sir. If this is some kind of nonsense, Philippe. <laughs> And boy, he meant it, too. Well, what are you going to do now, Pop? Hedge hop, look around, take pictures. Oh, look, chum, look, take it easy. You hedge hop through one of those canyons, your hedge hopping days are over. <laughs> You're not worried about me, are no, you, No, no, I mean it, Pop. The air currents in those narrow canyons are dynamite. Those little Japs aren't exactly asleep, either. I flew at 5,000 feet, and I came back looking like a sieve. Just keep your shirts on, pals, and I'll bring you back some nice, pretty pictures. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Hey, give me back that dough. Take it easy, take it easy. You'll get it if I don't get the picture. So long, guys. See you, man. Well, how do you like that? Well, here comes a wonder boy now. Hey, how do you suppose he made out? I don't know. Well, he got back anyway, which was almost more than I expected. Well, looks like he got shot up a little, though. I told him. Maybe yeah. we better go over and have a look. Yeah, yeah come on. Idea. Hey, Pop. Hey, Pop, how'd you make out? Boy, okay, pal. Boy, Harry, I didn't know you cared. About you? <laughs> Don't be silly. I just want to be sure you didn't have any holes through that water dough that we're going to collect. <laughs> that dough's plenty safe, pal. Don't worry. Yeah, for who? Any luck, Pop? Now, just keep your pants on, gents. I'm making my report to the CG. <laughs> Well, 
listening to Warren William as Major Polifka in The Major and the Mules on The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Major Polifka from Texas, USA, is convinced that the ammunition with which the Japanese threaten the American position on New Guinea is carried across the mountains by mules. No one believes him, but he's bet his bankroll that he's right and has just returned from a reconnaissance flight with pictures which he hopes will prove it. Aren't those pictures ready yet? No, no, sir. Okay. Hey, Tech. Huh? Did those guys try to pump you about any of the stuff I saw up there? They asked me some questions, sir. You didn't tell them anything, did you? Major, I was as gabby as a lock-jawed barber with nobody to shave. <laughs> Good boy. Here are your pictures, sir. Oh, thanks. Huh. Nothing on this one. Well, this one. Ah, here's something. Hmm? Yep. Yep, it might be. See that text? Yes, sir. It, it might be. It must be. And I sure hope the old man agrees. Well, I'll take these right in and show them. Come in. Major Polifka reporting, sir. Come in, Polifka. Come in. Well, did you find your mules? I think so, sir. Look here. Look on this picture. See that? See what? I don't see anything that looks like a mule to me. No, but those dark patches, sir. They're shelters of some kind. Camouflage corrals, they could be. Could be. They could be anything. Oh, but they must be, sir. Now, a few 820s might dig them out into the light. Major, you know we haven't got bombs to waste on hypothetical targets. But, General... No, Polifka, no. Do you have any idea how much time and money and effort it takes to get a bomb out of this hellhole of an island? Absolutely no. But, General, my ship's just a reconnaissance plane. Why, flying flusy doesn't even carry guns. All I'd like to do is take her and dive down on uh, one of these things and kind of scare things up a little. And what will that prove? I don't know, sir. Just a hunch. Major Polifka, I don't like to lose planes and I don't like to lose pilots. But I can't watch everything you do. And so if you want to hedge hop some patch of jungle swamp, I suppose I can't stop you. Thank you, sir. But if you crack up one of my ships and ever get back here to tell me about it, Heaven help you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We're in, Tex. We're in. Do you get it? I think I do, sir. You know mules, Tex. Yes, sir. Very sensitive animal, the mule, right? Yes, sir. So those are corrals, and there are mules in them, and I can get down close enough to them and jazz the motors on flying floozy. They'll bust out of there and run like... Right! Joe Goat calling three goats Joe Goat calling three goats Over, over Three goats to Joe Goat Three goats to Joe Goat What's on your mind, Tex? Getting there, Major Any second now How's it look up there? Well, maybe rough going, Sergeant there it is, that, that pad shot I showed you. I'm over the canyon now. Figure to have any trouble going down? I was getting out, it worries me. Just enough room to get old floozy in. Maybe pull out again. You there, Joe Goat? Yes, sir. Any of my pals hanging around your shack? Uh, oh, well, not yet, but I'm expecting them any minute. Uh, keep them guessing, boy, keep them guessing. Your camera's all set. I'm fixing to go. Good luck, sir. Thanks, Joe Goat. Stick around. I'll give it to you play by play. Okay, three goats. Joe Goat standing by. Right. Now, listen. Here's what I'm going to do. The only way to convince those guys down there is to come in with autographed pictures of mules. So I'm going to dive on that patch and jazz the motors all out about 800 yards. Just at the end of the dive, I'm going to cut the motor for a couple of seconds so I can hear. Because if there are mules, down there, and if I don't see him on the first pass, I'll sure enough hear him. And all the time, old big guy's gonna be making pretty pictures. Okay, here I go. There they are! There they are! Roger, Roger. Hold everything, I'm, I'm heading for the trees. Here comes trouble! Are you all right? 
Three goats. Are you all right? Three goats. Three goats. Three goats. Yeah, I'm with you, son. I'm with you. I'm just picking some palm leaves out of my teeth, heading for home. Say, uh, did those mules come over at all? Yes, sir, but I also got something that sounded like ack ack. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Sergeant. Those mules have got kinfolk who've been educated to shoot. <laughs> Beauties, aren't they, sir? <laughs> Makes me feel right homesick. Hey, oh, here hi, comes the reception hey, committee. Well, what do you got? What do you got, huh? Come on in, boy. All right. Um, what do you got, Pop? Word. Hi, 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 fellas. Hi, yeah. More uh, jungle pictures, Pop? Well, maybe he's trying to start a real estate development for after the war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Polifka invites you to live in Swampy Gardens, a mule's paradise. <laughs> hey, why don't you guys lay off me? <laughs> I'm just trying to do my part in the war effort. Oh, oh, boy, boy, Pop. Pop. Good no work. kidding, Pop. Pop. Did you get anything? Well, come on, come on. Give us a look. Honest, I can't. I, I told the old man I'd show them to him right away. I was just going in to see him now. Well, uh... You mind if we come along? Oh, look, fellas, why don't you wait? And, uh, miss this? Now, you had your fun, Pop. Be a sport, pal. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, and that reminds me. What about that dough? Well, I guess you don't need to worry about that dough anymore. Come on. Ah, <laughs> the boy. Yeah, lead us to it. <clears throat> Coming. Major Polifka reporting, sir, with a uh, guard of honor. So I see. Come in, gentlemen, come in. Thank oh, you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd heard a rumor that certain parties had an interest in your exploits, other than of a purely military nature. Mm -hmm. Well, Major Polifka, at any rate, let me congratulate you on your return. Thank you, sir. And let me add that in thinking the matter over, I've decided I can't possibly afford to risk personnel and equipment on any more such adventures in the future. Uh, that's an order, Major. Yes, sir. I, I, I guess you won't have to anyway, sir. Well, I'm glad you see it that way. Oh? More pictures, eh? Yes, sir. Anything of interest? Oh, I think you might be interested in them, sir, just, just for the record. Here they are, sir. Thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Great Scott, Polly. And what goes? Well, oh, Mules! Boy. There must be a hundred of them scampering all over the landscape. That is a Mules. pretty big corral, sir. How did you ever catch them in the open like this? Look there hasn't been the slightest sign in all our weeks of reconnaissance. The flying flues, he must have given them a bad dose of jitters. And they just went to town. I figure the Japs only used them at night and kept them in these camouflage corrals during the day. Well, they're mules, all right. Heaven only knows where they got them. Do you realize, gentlemen, that this is the answer to all our troubles? Yes, it looks sir. their way to me, sir. Once we've scattered these mules, we'll have the Japs right where we want them. That was a nice bit of a con work, Major. Thank you, sir. Well, God of honor. <laughs> Pop, all I can say is I gotta hand it to you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, nice nice on, Pop. Jay. Well done. Right. Well, now. We'll want a bombing expedition against those corrals immediately. You'll follow up the pictures, Major. All right, sir. You know the terrain pretty well by now. Are there any special arrangements you might have to suggest? Why, yes, sir. There, there's one thing. All right. Uh, let's hear it. I'd like to nominate the pilots for this mule skin and expedition. If that's okay, sir. Uh -oh. Well, that's oh. possible. Who are your men? Well, Doc here's flight surgeon, so he's out. But Fred and Harry, they're definitely in. <laughs> Just try to keep us out. <laughs> hey, but wait a minute. You're a bit too anxious. Yeah. What's the gag? Gag? Why, gentlemen, would I stoop to such a thing? I just figure if you don't go, you'll be cheated. Because you sure paid in advance for this ride. <laughs> <laughs> Our thanks to Warren William, who will return to the microphone a little later with a message which will be of interest to everyone who has a friend or relative overseas. And to Pop, now Lieutenant Colonel Polifka, happy landings and good pictures wherever you may be. Before we tell you about next week's play, we'd like to tell you about the finely detailed maps and charts which made it possible for the fighting men of the Army Air Corps to wipe out the corral of Jap mules. In a windowless building near Washington, 1,700 technicians under the direction of the United States Army engineers 
are making for the armed forces an average of six million maps a month. Days before the United Nations invaded Sicily, maps revealing Sicilian roads and towns, hills and brooks were prepared, ready and waiting. Ten million maps went to North Africa, yet not a word of a coming military action has ever leaked out. To this mysterious map factory comes vital information from many sources. Refugees dig into their trunks and memories for valuable details of Axis gun emplacements and factory locations. Engineers who worked in Europe and Asia in peacetime contribute their knowledge of bridges, highways, and dams. Daring pilots swooping low over enemy country add miles of sharp, clear photographs, which are pieced together one by one in telltale mosaics, targets for tomorrow night. All of the information coming in is recorded on maps. There are waterproof maps made of light cloth that can be tucked into a flyer's pocket handkerchief light. Maps that can be read as glowing lines under ultraviolet light. Maps of every kind. Seven days a week, they pour from a battery of high-speed offset lithographic presses that can print 4,000 impressions an hour. Lithography is one of the oldest known methods of reproducing words and pictures. In photolithography, an image is photographed on a sheet of film. This image on the film is transferred to a sensitized metal or plastic plate. Then the plate is set up in a press, but a press different from the accepted idea of a printing press. In photolithography, the plate that carries the picture or map or whatever is being printed does not touch the paper. Instead, the ink from the plate is transferred or offset, as lithographers say, to a rubber roller or blanket. It is the rubber roller that finally prints the image on the paper. Offset lithography is used in printing maps by the million because it is more economical. Offset lithography is still more important in wartime because changes can be made directly on the plate at any moment. For example, if an advancing American unit finds a new enemy fortification in an unexpected position, the information can be flashed at once to a mobile lithographic plant in the field where the new enemy location can be sketched in directly on the map plate and new maps supplied within a few hours. We are happy to say that many of the sharp, clear maps destined for use by America's armed forces are produced with the aid of DuPont Photolith Lithographic Film, one of the DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And here is the star of this evening's cavalcade, Warren Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is a message for everyone who writes to a soldier or a sailor overseas. Letters from home are the number one morale builder. The men are eager for mail. The Army and Navy want them to have mail, and we, here at home, are just as anxious that they should. The mail is as private as any mail under wartime censorship. It's fast, and it's sure to be delivered. Remember, all V-mail is air mail, but regular air mail is not V-mail. Write often and send it by V-mail. <laughs> The Weapon That Saves Lives. That is the play which Cavalcade will present next week with Edmund Lowe as its star. One of the great success stories in the history of man's search through the centuries for a new healing agent. Our play tells the dramatic story of the sulfur drugs, which are saving countless American lives on the field of battle. Cavalcade invites you to join us again next Monday evening when we bring you Edmund Lowe in The Weapon That Saves Lives on the Cavalcade of America. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.